I'd like to weigh in for a moment on the events that transpired yesterday at the Capitol Hill building. Probably one of the most polarizing events in uh, my lifetime. I mean, just the amount of things we saw throughout 2020 was <clears throat> already insane, but this is a day that, for better or worse, will go down in history. I gotta say I'm a little disappointed, but um, not for the same reasons that a lot of people are. You see, what I'm disappointed in is just how many people are condemning this. Now I know, I know, crimes were committed, and there are a lot of great points made that tactically it wasn't the best decision to make. But uh, instead of just being defeatist about it and saying, oh well, people made a mistake and now we're set back a generation on everything we've been working for in terms of freedom of speech, in terms of populist movements and everything, <clears throat> why don't we look for the positives? Are there any to be had? I mean, if you ask me, I think there's a lot more than most people will tell you, including most Trump supporters, most, um, most uh, populist people. I mean, you watch people like Robert Barnes talking about how bad it was. Now, Barnes is a little bit closer to my side than most people because he said he wasn't offended or didn't have much of a problem morally with the people who just went in and walked around. And the, the, the guy with his feet up on the Speaker of the House's chair, that is an image that will go down in history. And I want to talk a little bit more about that, too, but... People are talking about the prison sentences that a lot of these people are going to get. Even the guy who just went in and had his feet kicked up on that chair, yeah, he's probably going to be going to prison. I mean, he's definitely going to prison if uh, if he's ID'd and he has his face in the photos, so. <clears throat> but I would be very curious to see an interview with that man. Because um, I wonder, the question that I would want, the, the number one question I would want to ask him if I had the chance to interview him myself would be, was it worth it? And I would love to hear the answer being absolutely. That image of some Joe Schmo, which I don't know anything about him, his career, or whatever, how he's served his community or, any, or hasn't or anything like that, but this regular looking Joe Schmo looking guy with his feet kicked up on Nancy Pelosi's Speaker of the House desk. That is an image that's going to go down in history. And it is crunch time to decide how it's going to go down. And personally, what I want to see is it going down in history as the symbol of the populist movement. I want a silhouette of a guy with his feet kicked up on a desk to be like the flat 2D logo for the populist movement that needs to come. <clears throat> The people who stormed the Capitol building are, in my eyes, modern-day martyrs. Way too many people are looking at this as a, as a negative thing, as a blunder, as a misstep, as, as, a, as a crime. And I mean, literally it is, but, <clears throat> you know. Think about this for a moment. We have pictures that will be with us forever, for the rest of the United States' existence and most likely beyond this colorized still image of a normal looking guy with his feet kicked up on that desk is going to be a historical moment captured in history. <clears throat> I think it's going to be on the same level as Caesar crossing the Rubicon as, um, this is embarrassing, I'm blanking on it, 
the guy who rode the elephants over the mountains, you know who I'm talking about. I know it, it's just uh, my brain's doing that thing where it doesn't want to tell me what it knows. Keeping its secrets from me. That was a regular old guy sitting at the desk of the Speaker of the House of the United States in the most casual manner possible. That is a sight I never thought I would see. And it's a sight that I'm happy I got to see. And it is a sight that I am immeasurably disappointed in so many people for treating it like a negative thing. I'm disappointed in Mike Pence. I'm disappointed in Donald Trump. I understand that Trump did what he had to do in giving his speech, supposedly, about uh, <clears throat> about the peaceful transition of power and everything, and I'll get to that in a second, too. The 6th of January, 2021, should be a day that tells the elites that their time in their ivory towers is limited. And I'm not saying their time on Earth. Very want to be very clear. I'm saying that their time in, in, in their ivory towers, their time spent at the top with their boots on 300 million people is limited. That is the message that should be put out right now. Was it a blunder in the short term? Sure. Tactically, I think it was a tactical misstep in the short term, but I think there is a very good opportunity to turn it around into a long-term victory. To make January 6th, 2021 AD a day that goes down in history as the day that the clock started ticking on the amount of time left for the elites to spend in their ivory towers. The eviction notice on their ivory towers. That is what January 6th should be to me. Also on a side note, that video on the official Donald J. Trump YouTube account, bro, that looks like a deep fake. Dude, that seriously looks like a deep fake. I, I mean, the head movements, the way the neck looks pasted into the suit, I, I know they did multiple camera angles, but I mean, God, like I've seen, I've seen deep fakes that looked more real and convincing than that, like that were explicitly labeled as deep fakes. Like the person showed how they made it. I don't know if you've ever seen the uh, the video of um, the uh, five U.S. presidents uh, rapping "F the Police" uh, by N.W.A. and then somebody made a deep fake video of it. <laughs> I mean, some of that looked more convincing than the video that was on the official Donald J. Trump YouTube account, but, man. In any case... <sighs> sure, the battle may have been lost in the short term. Tactically, it may have been a loss in the short term, but... We can... In, in, in my belief and opinion, we can... And we should hold these people up as the martyrs that they are for a populist cause. When we learn that guy's name, I can't wait to walk this earth with his name on my lips. The names on my lips shall be in order. Jesus Christ, the name of whatever that guy's name is, with his feet up on the desk, and then my own name in that order. That is how I want to live my days. And I hope that more people come around to the idea of, of making January 6th the eviction notice, the beginning of the countdown for the ivory towers in which people like Nancy Pelosi sit. That desk was her tower, and it, for one moment for one precious historical moment 
her tower was occupied by someone else. This is North Sea Hero, signing out.